A lot of people seem to have a misunderstanding of or are simply unaware of how accurate the M1 Garand is or ever was. So I thought I should make this video to preface my next video in which I conduct an accuracy test of five M1 rifles. My first group in that video ends up being a 4.7 inch group at 100 yards or roughly 4.7 minutes of angle. Now, if you're used to seeing these types of accuracy tests done with modern rifles, you may see 4.7 minutes of angle, think that I suck at shooting, and click off immediately. Well, a good craftsman never blames his tools, so I will admit that I don't shoot from a sandbag as often as I shoot unsupported, and I probably produced at least a few flyers that day. In general, however, I would consider myself a fairly competent rifle shooter and capable of conducting such an accuracy test. Despite this, someone will invariably post a comment about how back in their day they used to shoot the balls off bullfrogs with their M1, so my test is invalid. To hopefully avoid that, we're going to look into how accurate these rifles really were using primary source materials as well as my own personal experience. I have owned and shot a number of M1 Garands, possessing six at the time of this video, and the accuracy mentioned previously is about the accuracy I've come to expect from an M1 in good condition. The M1 Garand is not a particularly accurate rifle by modern standards, as even some of the cheapest rifles available today can print one MOA or better. Even still, it was known at the time of the M1 Garand's introduction that it wasn't as accurate as other US service rifles, such as the 1903 Springfield and 1917 Enfield. Historically, one of the major criticisms of the M1 was how the action was held into the stock by spring tension rather than being screwed together, which makes it a lot harder to achieve consistent stock bedding, especially as the rifle ages. Also, semi-autos have generally and historically been considered less accurate than their manually cycled counterparts, though the reasons why are beyond the scope of this video. Despite this, the vastly increased volume of fire, ease of follow-up shots, and toolless disassembly were valued more than pure accuracy when the rifle was adopted, and so the M1 came to be America's service rifle. With all that said, the standard for accuracy of newly produced M1 Garands in 1950, which I assume could only be higher than what was acceptable during the Second World War, was a little over 5 minutes of angle. According to MIL-R 3285 Military Specifications for Rifles US Caliber 30 M1 and M1C dated 8 September of 1950, the process for which rifles were tested for accuracy was as follows. At a range of 100 yards and using a fixed or muzzle and elbow rest, each rifle of a lot shall be fired one series of five rounds of caliber 30 ball ammunition of known accuracy at a 5-inch bullseye or a T target. All shots shall come within or cut the edge of the bullseye, or a centrally located 5-inch circle if a T target is used. Perhaps relevant to the topic, and for some additional perspective, we can also find the accuracy standards of the M1C sniper variant in this document. The M1C shall be fired for accuracy at a range of 100 yards using a machine rest and Woodworth type cradle. The flash hider shall be attached to the rifle during firing. Government standard M2 ball ammunition of known accuracy shall be used. All shots shall be within or cut the edge of a circle 2.5 inches in diameter, all shots within a 3.1 inch circumscribed circle. So what were supposed to be some of the most accurate M1 Garands, a sniper rifle, has a requirement from a fixed mechanical rest of 3.1 minutes of angle. The most recent document I could find, and perhaps the most relevant to the M1 rifles we find today, is USAWECOMDMWI 1005-222. Published in June of 1965, this document lays out the standards for M1 Garands going through an arsenal rebuild, and it states regarding accuracy, quote, With a rifle held in a targeting jack, which I assume is some kind of mechanical rest, five rounds fired from the rifle at a range of 1,000 inches shall be within a 1.77 inch diameter circle, and the circle shall be within the targeting area specified on drawing D7266850, which is what you see here. 1,000 inches works out to 27.77 repeating yards, so 1.77 inches at that range extrapolated out to 100 yards gives us an accuracy requirement of about 6.4 minutes of angle. That is well above my first group with this Letterkenny Arsenal rebuilt M1 Garand shot at 100 yards outdoors from a sandbag instead of the mechanical rest and presumably indoor environment described in the document. So, is the conclusion of this video that the M1 Garand is an inaccurate rifle? Of course not. The US military would not have adopted an inaccurate rifle, and especially wouldn't have kept using it well into the 1960s. What counts as accurate or not depends heavily on the context in which the accuracy is being applied. I think the main point I would like to convey with this video is that we should have a realistic understanding of how accurate the M1 rifle is and was meant to be, and that it's foolish to let modern standards of accuracy or nostalgia distort our expectations of the rifle in either direction. My advice to anyone regarding the M1 is to pick one up and shoot it.
Hopefully this video has helped you learn something or maybe make you think twice the next time you hear or read something on the internet about how accurate or inaccurate someone's M1 is. Well, if you like this video, please leave a like and subscribe so you can catch the follow-up video in which I go through and test five M1 Garands for accuracy and compare it to their barrel erosion, yet another fiercely debated and misunderstood subject. Thanks for watching and take care. The most recent document I could find, and perhaps the most relevant to the M1 rifles we find today, is USA WECOMDMWI 1005-222.